What's up everybody? Monkey Mike here with Monkey Wrenching and today I am making the snatch plates for the J series and I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight into what I'm doing. This is an extremely easy thing that I'm making. You can use angle iron which is what I... Ooh, let me see if that's hot. Which is what I use. Um, it's really really simple and all we're gonna do is, at the moment, you can see the seam is open, and this is actually a new version that I'm trying. I, as you can see, I'm a really good grinder because my welder sucks, and I'm not the best welder in the world. That's not what I'm claiming to be. I'm sure maybe someday I'll get like meticulous status and be good, <laughs> but for now, I am not. And uh, with that said, I've got lots of grinding stuff and grinding stuff and 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 things to grind with and uh, that helps get things along so we can still get this all happening. So as you can see here, I, well, I weld up the ends. I left this one alone, I haven't touched it yet. In just a moment. Man, I'm getting really good at losing footage. I gotta get back on my game of filming with this thing. It was like a couple days not having a tripod and I'll screw everything up. So as you can see here, I have the snatch plates that I'm making. The seam is open on this one. I just got done doing the seam and grinding it flat because, well, welds usually aren't flat. And regardless of how good my welds may or may not have been, it needs to be flat. And that's that. I left this raw. I haven't done that part yet. This still has a little bit of grinding because I'm not the best welder in the world. My welder sucks. And uh, this is you know how you take care of that. Be the best grinder. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I take my little deal here and I make sure everything is nice and squared up. And you know, it, it does the job for the most part. As you can see, it's almost dead on. What we get right there. So, I mean, you see it's, you know, tiny, tiny, tiny little C word hair off. And uh, it's like that all the way around. This one here, as I said before, and you can see I fixed my vice too. That was, you know what they say, invention is the necessity, god damn it. You know, I just said this off camera because I was trying to film it and I screwed it up then too. What is it? Necessity is the mother of all inventions. There we go, man. Holy crap, that was... Uh, when my brain just like, and I'm, I'm not dyslexic or anything. It's, it's just weird. I don't know. Usually I'm pretty good with throwing old dad quotes out there, but this is what I'm doing here. Um, something I do want to bring up as you're looking at these, and I did go back over these seams here. This is the main seam, ooh, the main seam that this one has, and this is not welded on the bottom at all. It's wide open. And if you look really closely right here, you can actually see that seam there that I just painted over. This one works great. I have used it multiple times. I have swung on it with a motor on it. I have, I have pulled this whole entire car up. That plate works really, really well. As you can see, I just drew a hole here, hole here. You can put your bolts in. You can put in some fish eyes and you know, can actually use hooks if you want. Um, I was thinking about adding one here in the center, but I really don't like that. I like having the two holes there and forcing someone to use a chain or something to that effect, mainly because I don't want to depend on it being like that far down and then it's teeter tottering and that just doesn't, you know, one point of hooking up to it doesn't really sound great to me. It's, it's actually sounds kind of scary. Um, I do usually tighten these so you know it does put some clamp force on there. I'm making these to where they don't have to do that. I don't want them to have to worry about whether or not these are going to support the engine or their way of picking the engine up. Most of the time I just see them wrapping chains around it and I'm just not okay with that. My buddies need to have some better stuff. I, I consider them buddies of mine so you know it, however you want to look at it. I'm a fan of theirs as well. And uh, I hope one day, maybe, you know, if I get enough stuff going, they'll be a fan of mine. And, and, you know, we can all be fans and friends. And, you know, a fan just means that you like what they're doing. You are a fan of what they're doing. And yeah, they have inspired me to do a lot. And this is just kind of my way I want to give back to them. And they both have, you know, uh, this non-transverse, I can't remember what it's called, but the non-transverse 
setup for a J series and getting it out of there is just an absolute pain. This is going to make their lives a whole lot easier and make just uh, you know engine removal even when you're on site somewhere and you need to get it pulled up. This will be a million times easier. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, like I said, I have added the seam here on the ends. We do have the main seam up here at the top, and now I'm adding a seam at the bottom as well. And this is just gonna make you know, the whole thing a whole lot stronger. And then we'll drill the holes accordingly. It's really easy to do. I used this here as a template. Uh, it was actually a different motor, but basically it's the same thing. I use that as the template because from what I understand, that's pretty much how all the J-Series work. You know, uh, J30, 32, and 35 have so many interchangeable parts. If for some reason that they use a different type of mount, I, I need to learn about it. Maybe I'll just, you know, grab up the intake manifold part and get that fabbed up. But from my understanding, this bolt pattern right here should work perfect. And um, mainly because like, you know, if you look up P2R, you can I can see which intake manifold that they're using and how that's going to work. So before I go drilling the holes in here, I want to make sure of that. And uh, if that's not the case, you know, I'll just like, I'll go find a Honda Odyssey somewhere in a junkyard and I'll go make a template. I'll go find a ridge line somewhere and I'll make a template. It's not really that hard to do. It just may add a little bit of time. And yeah, I'll just take a piece of wood with me and just do it on the spot, bring a, the cordless drill and just make the template right there. Easy peasy lemon squeeze, guys. All right, that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm doing that today mainly because we're waiting on the motor mounts to show up and I, I need to know how much more I can get the engine down without sacrificing the oil pan becoming visible. And as you see right here, I mean, we have a bit more room that we can go down. Not a whole lot. And what I mean by that is down in here, it's kind of hard to see, but the oil pan on the back side of this J series here and the ones that I do intend to keep using, they all have uh, two bolts on the bottom of it. I don't want to get rid of those bolts. So sit up against the plate you know, if I got rid of that whole bottom section there, we may be able to get that trans back down to where it normally was and uh, significantly lower the engine, which I'm tossing around. I'm just, I don't want to lose structural integrity as well. So I don't know. We'll go from there, but we'll be back. If not, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate y'all. Um, we'll know in the edit, won't we? So before I get too far into this, I want to show you guys where I'm at, and there's a specific reason why. I'll show you a really, really, really good use for aluminum foil. You'll see this over here. And notice that it has the same basic shape as this guy right here. And really, because when you lay this on there, you can see that it's very easy to take shape and form. And then you can just lay it onto whatever you got and you have your really easy, cheap throwaway template. Being that it's foil, you know, if you poke holes in it and screw it up, it's not really that big of a deal. So let me get the camera set up and I will show you exactly how it's done. Take a random brand of Kroger aluminum foil. Pull it off the can, try not to get it all marred up. Sorry, that was loud enough I was going to be. You're just going to lay it down, do the best you can, keep it all nice and flat. And as you can see here, it very easily starts to take the shape. Okay, and then you can just hold it down, poke some holes in it. Well, that one there is actually pretty much garbage, it doesn't matter. There you go. So now when I take it off, I can just lay it on top. But first, I'll show you that we need to prep what we're using a little bit more. But this is basically how we do that there. Nice, easy template, cheap, can throw it away, make a new one really easily. So this here is actually ready to paint. I've got everything all nice and flattened out. You see we got our holes. This here goes on like that.
and then this gets bolted and, and that's it. So I do have some paint for it. As you can see, it did get squared up on the sides there. And the reason for that is that it's gonna be just a little bit, a little bit wider than the actual J-Series uh, manifold piece. So basically I just ground the sides down until, you know, I just do one pass and then another pass and another pass and I do it until it slowly starts to come together and becomes the width of that right there. And then I'll put that over, si over the sides of it. I mark it out with the uh, permanent marker right here and then I'll drill the holes in it. So give me a moment to get it all set up and I'll show you what happens. Now before you do any grinding, especially with a wheel like that, I highly recommend a respirator of some sort, not just a random dust mask. Those will creep by pretty easy. You want something you can feel when you breathe in. That there's a little bit of restriction, because that means that the filter is actually working. There's a lot of dust that comes off those. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm not trying to breathe that stuff in. And the minute you go like this, and all that crap just goes everywhere. So be smart. Make sure you wear some sort of breathing protection as well. Remember, if, if your lungs get damaged, it's hard to fix. Other stuff's a little bit easier to deal with. All right, guys, so I still got my dust mask on, and uh, I probably got to go kill that music just to make sure we don't have any copyright issues. But you can see we got our template right there. Can we get this killed real quick? All right. I, I hate doing that. It drives me nuts because I just like to listen to music. So I mean, yeah, I still got my respirator on too because I just got done. I guess I can take it off. That dust usually settles pretty quick, like, and you can understand me better. So you can see we have our template sitting here. And what I like to do is my best to make sure that it stays straight. At least with one side. That's the biggest goal. The other side usually falls in line. Yep, much like this one is doing currently. Okay, and then we just fold that sucker in. This is why I like using the foil too, is it'll, it'll conform. So basically you have a template that is cheap to make. It takes the exact form. You can see we still have even the shape of the, uh, the inputs, or the inlets, rather. So depending on what you were making, maybe you were trying to make like a manifold adapter or a spacer of some sort, something like this would be absolutely perfect and crucial to getting it done cheap and on a budget. Got my uh, big old fatty here. So like I said before, you just come in, do the best you can to follow the holes that you got. The nice thing about foil as well is that the marker is actually pushing it around in the hole there and reshaping that hole. Now mind you, this isn't flawless. There's probably a better way to do it, I guess. But there's not a cheaper way that I know of. And this is quite effective. All right, so there's that part. Now we're gonna take our punch. We're just gonna go into the center of each one of these. Hit it nice and hard, give it a real good whack. Pretend like you're trying to fix stupid. As far as I know, this is the only way to fix stupid. With a big friggin' hammer. task is just drilling the holes out. I put my gloves on for this because I have a tendency of using my fingers or using my hands to uh, clean metal shavings away. So it's just good to have these on. Always wear your eye protection. Uh oh, that didn't sound very good. Hopefully it holds. Let's over here first. Sorry about that. I have a feeling the vice is going to break. Probably like right now. I really hope not. It sounds like it's going to. Yeah, it is. All right, well, let's get these center ones first. It'll be easier to deal with. This sucks. It was doing so good. Why do I have to break right now? Ugh. Damn it. Can just hold up a little bit longer. All right, well, I'm going to make sure to get this done the best I can. So, I got my respirator back on, as you can hear. So, we're doing some paint. We got it all nice and coated up there with some automotive primer. Not going to use the cheap crap because we want it to stick. Looks good to me. We got some custom colors here that give you an idea of where these are going. So you got olive shade, and you got gunmetal gray. 
This is what I'm going to use as the outer protective coating. Hopefully it works well. You can see that the uh, wire wheel bit me. We have some stuff to paint it later. That's after the primer dries. Probably give it a couple of coats. And then, and then yeah, I don't, I don't know. Paint, paint, and paint, and then uh, send them off. I test fit them earlier, they did great. Hopefully we won't have any issue like I did here with those rings. That was from using these, which is fine because that's always where they're gonna go anyway. But I think maybe I might try to find a more efficient way. And this is just a real easy way to get away with doing this, a flange nut. Works as a spacer there. And yeah, like I said, wear your PPE, man. We want to live to see another day. We want to live to, uh, to work another day to make more crap. So just wear your stuff. Doesn't make you not cool. Makes you alive for another day. So, yep, this is pretty much it. I'm going to keep painting away. And uh, those won't be done till tomorrow. So thanks for stopping by, guys. This is today's video. It's just me kind of making those. I mean, I don't need to show you how I drilled them, right? Uh, you already saw the, the vice broke. And... Yep, so tomorrow's video is going to be really cool. I'm excited. I get to review this camera that my buddy Vegas Boo sent me. Shout out to you, man. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Can't wait to check that thing out. This thing sucks for chems, so I'm going to get out of here and let that dry. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.